everyone, thank you for this moment. Um, it's the Holy Ghost School program. Um, by the grace of God, my name is Sister Grace. And um, coordinator, thank you for the great job you are doing and um, God bless you. Yeah, thank every one of you for those that are um, contributing, those that are subscribing, those that are asking questions, those that are watching after we must have put it in the air there in the YouTube. So today um, we deal with, yes, last week about Joseph, we are set and found Joseph. And this week I said, after last week, I'm going to bring the second part of the level, uh, uh, topic today. And the topic is going to be how did, what would we learn from Joseph encounter or from Joseph University or whatever we can call it that Joseph go through, through our last teaching or topic. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We ask you to, to come and bless us and use this message today to touch the life of our all life and the life of people that watch later and those that join online right now. Father, we ask you to come and speak through us. Spirit of God, I release myself to come and use my mouth to bless our souls right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, so um, last week we did about how we are set and found yourself in the dungeon, in the marketplace, in the auction where he was sold, and in the Potiphar's house, also in the prison. And we studied um, how Joseph uh, dealt with the matters, how Joseph, you know, uh, uh, take it light. He didn't see the bad side of the family. You know, where we read, the Bible said that Joseph called his uh, families in. And the bringing them in means let's talk and reveal things and so that things will be settled. So today we are going to deal on the matter, says, what did you, what will we learn from Joseph University or uh, what will we learn in this Joseph encounter? Number one, the opportunity Joseph had to hate his family, he did not. I have never seen such a program, such a problem or encounter in life. And most times I ask questions, have you reached the level of where your family or your friends sold you and eventually come out of it? And because of this, you will never forgive, you will never forget. So, but this guy, he go through a lot. Even though you've reached where your, your, your friends or your family sold you, have you reached level of where they put you in the pit? Have you reached level where they, they put you in the prison? Have you reached level where you, they, they cascade you in, in so many ways? So, but on this, the first thing we learn from Joseph is that, this guy had opportunities to hate his father, but he loved them. This is a man that have power. This is a man that have authority. This is a man that have every right to punish, to prison, to kill the family members. But what did he do? He did not do it that way. So these are the, one of the things we learned that even though you are in authority, Many people, when they see themselves in authority, they see it as an avenue to revenge. That was why nation versus nation, community versus community, kingdom and the kingdom, kingdom against kingdoms. Why? They will begin to remember that in such and so time, their grandpa, they were, they were good. He, were, he was the judge and he, he, and he, he belittled them. He undergraded them. He punishes them, he kills them. And because of this, now is our right. Our own turn has come for us to deal with these people because in their own turn, they dealt with us. Revenge. But this guy had the opportunity to do all, if not letting even allow hunger to finish them. If he doesn't want to prison them, he doesn't want to execute them, he doesn't want to put them in auction there as they did to him, the only option he would have done quietly is that he's not going to sell the food to them, but he will send them away in hunger so that they will die because there is a great famine in the country. But Joseph did not do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he has opportunity, he has authority. I don't know the authority you had. I don't know the office you are. He doesn't want to give these particular people a job because of one thing that happened in the past. 
He doesn't want to help the community because of what they say. He doesn't want to come out or do one good or positive thing because of you know, what happened in the past. Look at a Joseph, if you're a Christian, please study about yourself. You'll learn a lot of things concerning this man. So that is number one point, what we learn in Joseph University. Then we are going to go to scripture and see what Bible says according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. Matthew 10, 42 says something. Let me start from 40 to 42. It say, he who receive you, receive me. And he who receive me, receive him who sent me. He who receive a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet reward. And he who receive a righteous man in the name of the righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. And whoever give one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of, his, in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Now you have seen Joseph. And you have seen the encounter he had with his family. So, but he knows that if he give this family food, he will receive a reward. He doesn't want to reward them with evil. This guy is a role model. He's, 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 I think he's my party in the, in the Bible. When I study about Bible stories, I see that this guy, if I try to see if we can meet up to the standard of this guy, because he's a really great man. So now, when we go to another place in the Bible, because let's go to scriptures, then we'll come back. The next place I'm going to read is the book of Matthew chapter 5, 43. Matthew 5, 43. Let's see what it says. 5, 43 says, You have heard it, it was said, You shall love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I say to you, you I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully, who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you, may be, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and, he, and good. And he send rain on just and the unjust. He sent rain to the just and the unjust. So look at what Jesus said. So Jesus came, but the question should be, have Joseph seen Jesus? This happened before Jesus was born. So will I say that J Joseph was the first Jesus that came on earth? If I say so, I didn't make a mistake because he just characterized Jesus' words. He, he's supposed to practice what the law of Moses says. You, it, it says, you have heard it was said, you shall hate your neighbor and hate your enemies. This is what he's supposed to walk with, which is Joseph. But Joseph have never seen Christ, neither have his witness um, the coming of Christ, the new generation, let's like say the New Testament, you know. But he started walking ahead of the time. So Joseph could be Christ. So he characterized Christ's character and he characterized exactly what Jesus said in that verse 14. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. This is what Joseph did. So I don't know who have offended you. I don't know who have done so much harm on you and you are just there sitting. How do I reiterate? How do I you know, do bad? How do I revenge? Jesus is telling us and you have heard what he says in the word of God. We should love our enemies. It is very difficult. This is the highest commandment. But Joseph, who have not even heard it from Jesus' mouth, have started acting it, have started characterizing it even before it is written in the word of God. So this Joseph, I could call him the first Christ before Jesus come. Because all the action of Joseph, he really did so. One, he does not hate his family. Number two, he prayed for them. Number three, they despite him, they persecute him because of his dream, but he did not give it to them back. He did not do that back to them, but he, he used love to accept them. And look at what God says, that 45, he said, that you may be a son of father in heaven, for he makes the sun to rise for the evil and for the good, and he make rain to fall to the just and unjust. 
That is exactly what Joseph did. The family persecuted him and they sold him. He gave them food. The, the, the Ishmaelites, he gave them food because he became the, the prime minister. He was in a position to give food to people, to nations, to communities, to society. And you never hear in the Bible that Joseph you know, deprived a particular people or race that they shouldn't get the food. Why? God placed him there as a savior by the dream of Pharaoh and he understand the dream and the, God gave him the wisdom and that wisdom helped him. He began to store food knowing that famine is coming. And during the fine time of the famine, Joseph brought the food and he sold it to everybody, every part of the people. They collected the food, they pay a little ransom and they were fed and none of them died during the famine because this guy, I called him the first Christ. Now, look at what is going on. Even during pandemic, you see how people are so wicked. If I watch, if you can trace the people during the, the pandemic, how they took all the food you are provided for people, they, they pack it somewhere, many of them rotting there. I don't know what they have in mind in doing that. And even when people were there opening the warehouses to take the food, this thing happened in Nigeria. The year they were flogging people, they were killing people, they were shooting people. It's like the food we are giving to you as a leader to give the people you are leading, you pack it over there. What a wickedness. You would have bring it to them, even you sell it to them in a cheaper price. It would have been better for you to lock it there and people are dying in hunger. Like Indomies and all those bags of rice, had it been you put it if bag of rice is 10,000, you put it one 1,000, it would have been better. If Indomie is 2,000, you put it 300 naira, it would have been better. People will buy it and they will feed themselves than putting it over there and you lock it. Most times I ask Christians, what are you for? In the position you are kept, you see yourself, but you don't want you use it to, to bless people. You don't want to do something that you'll be used to remember after you, you, you must have retired or when you are done or when you leave this world. I don't know the legacy you are keeping for people to use to remember you after death. Because people are being remembered after death. There must be something you, 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 you kept on earth while you are living, either positive or negative. There must be something that people will use to remember that you are no more. There must be something that people will cry for, that if you were there, this thing wouldn't have been happened. If you are not ready to pass a, 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 a positive you know, life helps to your generation, I think you are on earth in vain. And I want you to know that that position that you held, you think is only for you. Me, 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 my family, me, my husband, me, my children, me, myself. That is all about what you think about with the position God gives to you. I want you to know that later at time, you will be shifted out of the position. Someone else will take over. There is no condition or position that is permanent. Even though you want to be permanent there, death will come and remove you out of that place because another person must take your seat to be able to reach the people. So that is what we are learning from Joseph. Then the next place, I want us to go through the scriptures so we can understand what Bible says and how Joseph characterized the word of God. The next place is Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. 1220. Romans chapter 12, verse 20 says, Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap cold of fire on his edge. You could imagine. And he finally said 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I keep seeing, when I was studying all these verses in the Bible, and I was using it to compare with Joseph, I now, dis, I now you know, declare that Joseph is the first Christ that came. Because his attitude was just like Christ's character. He has acted the life of Christ before Christ came. Look at what Bible says. And this is exactly what Joseph did. He did not count it evil for them. He does not punish them. He would have taken them to the prison and sent to their father to come. He would have, you know, used cane to flog them. He would have, you know, he wouldn't have sell food for them. Because remember, it was food that the family came for. And he saw the family. And he now put food and put extra. After putting the extra, he now take the, the, their money. The, the money they paid and put into the, their cigarette cup and put back on their, in their bags. 
and now send this guy to go and grab them because he didn't want to reveal himself indirectly that he is their brother and the dream has come to pass. And if you watch the encounter, you can see when the Joseph, uh, uh, what I say, uh, man brought, uh, um, brought them back, eventually he held on his brother Benjamin and sent the rest. Why did he do so? He was doing so out of love because he really want to see their father so that their father will also come to enjoy. In fact, his plan was to bring his family to come down there and live like a kings in that land of Egypt. Who among you can do that? Today, little thing that your brother do to you, you are done. A little thing your sister did to you, you are done. A little thing your friends did to you, you are done. A little thing your family member did to you, you are done. A little thing your neighbor did, you are done. What which kind of life we are living? The, look at the beautiful world God has created. Look at how we mess it up. Hatred in the right. Hatred in the left. Hatred up. Hatred down. Hatred in the marriage. You can imagine the kind of words that come from husband and wife. You can imagine the kind of, the kind of, uh, um, uh, um, will I say, uh, uh, words that come between two friends. You can imagine the kind of words that come even between mother, parents, and their children. You can imagine between what is going on in your working place, in your office. You see what is going on. So what God is telling us today is that Bible have made it clear to us that indeed, if our enemy is hungry, we should give him food. And that is what uh, Joseph acted. They were hungry. They find him come where he is. And he, he, he knew that it was their family member, but he did not remember the evil they did to him. He just paid with good. That is what Bible says. Brethren, can you learn this from today? Practice it. And that is what he said in the next place we read. He said, so that my father can be your father. That is what he said in the other Matthew we read. He said, when you do this, that means you are doing what my father likes. Then you can be, you know, a daughter or a father of my father. And the other side, he says, indeed, that if you do that good, remember, if you should not repay with evil. Why? Because God is the one that brings sunshine. Sunshine to the good people, to the bad people. God is the one that brings what? Rain to the just and unjust. Why is he saying so? He's saying so because he don't want you to revenge. If God wants to revenge, you would have started revenging from me and you from the sins and evil we have done. So even at the end of all the abominations and the iniquity we've committed, God have never seen son. At the end of all the evil, the 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 the, 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 the sacrilege, the, a lot of evil we've been committing, he has never ceased rain. He has never dried the seas. He has never dried the oceans so that we can find fish to eat. He has never allowed the animals to die so we can get meat to eat. He has never, you know, dry. What would I say? He has never seized the moon so that we cannot see brightness. He has never made, you know, 100 days of darkness where, you know, the day will never break. Everybody, technology, um, we try their best, it won't work. The solar, we try their work, it won't work. You know, batteries, we try their work, it won't work. Uh, one of the technologies, the, the people in the space, they will try to give light, they won't work. Why? Because the king of glory, the creator of humanity, the creator of creatures, have decided to shut down creatures. He has shut down the light. He has shut down the days and keep everywhere being dark. For days and weeks and months, what do you think will be the condition of humanity? So he doesn't revenge to us. Why should you revenge to someone? So if he begin to revenge to us the way we are revenging to people, the earth will finish. Most of the government, most of the politicians, they try and struggle to enter into the politics just to punish the fellow uh, uh, opponents, or to punish the community, or to punish people, just because when they were not in a power, they were being oppressed in one way or the other, now they want to enter into the power just because they have a mind of destroying people, destroying human beings, destroying fellow maybe community or society or fellow politicians, because he felt indeed, I cannot go with security, and you can't go with security, it is my turn to deal with you. What does he gain to you? The position that you see yourself into, it is God allowed you, if not, you wouldn't have been there, even though you spend all your money and do all the sacrifice and ritual, yet you will never enter the seat. 
So God forgive instantly, but we don't forgive. So this is the Bible uh, passage I want us to read before I continue my point. And the last one that touched me, he said, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Many of us are revenging. You don't give your enemy food. You don't give your enemy food. I had one encounter. I know that this person is a bad person. All my revelations, all the dealings, the encounter is as given to me. He's a bad person. But one time I traveled to Africa, I said, God, you showed me, you told me to love my enemies. I don't know what this woman does all the time. But one thing I know, I'm going to buy beverages. I'm going to give for her. And I did it. And, you know, with all my heart, I bought those things. I went, I greeted, and I gave her those things. I said, this is the gift I buy for you. And after I did it, I have my peace. I was so happy. I just walked my way. The only thing I know is that you, you, if you do anything bad against me, that is your problem. God will judge you. But God has told me I should love. I know that this person is a devil. But how will I go with empty hands? I will say hello. Or, you know, so, I mean, it's an elderly person. I bought my privileges. I went and greeted. I said, this is what I bought for you. And I left. I have done my part. So, and these are the things God is expecting from us. Many of us, we, you will never try to give someone something because he had that that person is a devil, the person is an enemy. It's not done like that. If God begins to treat us that way, I tell you, the earth will shut down. And we are seeing people, Joseph is a human being. And he acted this positive. So God is asking us, the, the, the body of Christ or the Christianity is not all about, you go to church, you hear the word of God, you come down. No, you read the Bible, the spirit of God tell you the truth. You practice the truth. And that is how the, the community can change. That is why the neighborhood can, can change. That is why love can come back in action in this world we are living. We are hatred, have sweep everywhere. And he says, for he, when your enemy is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap a coat of fire on his head. You see? So when your enemy asks you for something, give it to him. And as I give it to him, it is even, that is the worst ritual. You don't need to go to native doctor to do ritual against your enemy. You don't need to go to um, whatever to do a blood sacrifice against your enemy. You don't need to naked yourself, what most of the ritual people does, and call it prayer, maliciousness, wickedness. Such a deception. You don't need it. What Jesus said is the greatest ritual. Take that cup of water, cold water. Give it to that person that is causing problem for you. Give it to the person you say is your enemy. As he or she collected the water and he drank it, you have put a head of fire, a coal of, you know what is coal of fire? You put it on top of the person. There's no ritual than this. And why people doesn't understand how to treat issues when it's difficult is because they don't study the Bible. They don't know the word of God. They follow all these pastors that will teach them maliciousness, wickedness, revengeful. And when you, that is why most prayer is not answered. Because it doesn't work according to the word of God. Look at what Jesus said we should do to our enemy. But what do we do to our enemy today? They must die. They must be removed. They must do that. That means the prayer is not answered. You see some people, they will bring cane. They are flogging their enemy. How many enemies have you killed since you started flogging them? And the worst is that when you flog them and they die, they, their blood is on your head. And the one day you will flog you, you will die. When you use your knife to cut them in your prayer, you use knife and butcher and butcher and they die. Their blood is on your head. That is what Bible says. And if God butcher you that way, you would have gone and go to hell. So that is the secret of Joseph. Joseph acted like a Christ. That is why I said that Joseph is like a Christ that came before Christ came physical. Because he acted exactly. Give your enemy a cup of water. He gave the family food. And at the end of food, he even bring them back and they, they stay with him and they live with him. And most times I ask myself a question. I wonder how guilty conscience, you know, we be, you know, dealing with his family. And then I begin to understand how Joseph works smartly. He first of all bring himself, he bring their, their family member down. He show them love. He bring them in. He tell them honestly, you meant it evil, but God made it for good. He find God instead of 
identifying the family. He see God instead of seeing the family. So that made Joseph to understand that this is a university, that God placed him, using his family to place him so that he can able to be the prime minister. And Joseph also understood that God used his family to send him to the prison, send him to the Potiphar's wife, send him to the, to the dungeon, send him to all the stress and the problem he, he gone through so that he can come to that kind of level where he will prime, be prime minister to be able to secure the food for them. Because if Joseph couldn't pass through those things, who will secure the family during that coming famine? That is the way God works. I don't know what you are going to, humanity don't want to understand the word of God. We are talking of Joseph University. A lot of people are going through that university today, but they don't understand. And that is why they treat you in like a mugo in a church. In most pastors, they give you wrong prayer topics to pray. They give you most wrong teachings because they don't understand what the system Jesus said we should follow to be able to conquer a problem, a high cost, cost problem, something that is so hard you have never passed. For the first time, Jesus gives you solution. Do you know that that was enemy? Do you know that that, in fact, after doing that to that person I was telling you, I started seeing positive results coming to me and my family. Why? Because I use love to pour. After all the long time period of persecution and his, his, his voodoo and the list of things he, he does against himself, not against me, I use love to pay back when I came and when I visited. And after that, things begin to turn positive. So it is, it, we have to understand the word of God. These are the person I'm supposed to cause. And, you know, you know, even when I meet him on the way, I will go my way. He goes his way. But Jesus taught me what to do. And when I did this, I said, Father, I'm going to give this act of love. Let love lead. And let love of God protect me. And I, I, I'm done. I finish. And he left for God to fulfill the scripture. So there are some prayer you pray. It doesn't work because it doesn't pray. It doesn't act according to the scripture, according to the word of God. So this Joseph University, that is the first thing we learn. They ha he had opportunity to suffer them, but he did not. He had opportunity to pay them back. He did not. Remember, he's a prime minister. He's in control of government, in the control of economy, in control of security, he's supposed to do all sorts of things to the family, but he did not do that because he understood that the family is a tool. These have been the point of what I've been teaching in this program. Your husband may be a tool. Your wife may be a tool. Your parents may be a tool. Your friend may be a tool. Your, your professor may be a tool. Your boss in your office may be a tool. Your marketplace may be a tool. Your car, your business may be a tool. Anything, your children may be a tool. Even you yourself may be a tool. Just don't be carried away with things coming and things you are going through, things happening. What you need to do is to pray, ask, inquire, God, what is this? What did you want from me in this? What did you want because of this? Then the, 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 the answer will come because these are tools that God wants to elevate us. These are the tools God wants to credit us. These are the tools God wants to hide us. But when you miss your opportunity, you are still going back and still praying in the morning, in the afternoon, brugodo, brakata, brakata. Yet, the little tool God sent to elevate you, you drop it. And what do you want God to do? He will just be there waiting for you and also waiting for another opportunity because any tool he sends, if you misuse it or if, if, you, if, you, if he doesn't grab it, another one will come. So you'll be waiting for another opportunity. These are the things that make cases and prayers take long time before being answered. Why? Because the, the tool that God sent for you to go through to grab your prayer answer, you need not take it. You did not understand it. You didn't work with it. You cast it away. You overlooked it. And God will keep quiet at the end. What it results? Some people feel offended that God doesn't answer prayers. But he answers. He does. So after that, number two is that um, Joseph understand. Another thing we learned there is that Joseph understand that God will eventually raise his enemies above, raise him above his enemies. So these are the things I understand that no matter how the, the flood, no matter how the wave, no matter how the heat of the enemy, God will eventually raise you above your enemies. That is another thing we learned there. Then another thing I see that like Adam who loves the wife and he fell for her, you know, and he ate the fruit. What does that mean? It means that Adam know that this woman is bringing falsehood, bringing something bad. But why? He loved the wife and he agreed to die with her. 
Adam knows all the word of God. He knows the constitution that governed the garden. He knows for sure. But this guy, he decided, why? Because of love. Because of that love he had for the wife, he decided to eat with the, the wife. Do you know that Adam's supposed to say, God, you know what? Uh, as the, the, the woman have done this. Oh, yeah. Okay, you can remove him and then give me another woman. But what did Adam say? Adam said, no, don't give me another woman. Die your new woman. God, keep it. I will die with this woman. Let both of us die together. And as I judging the woman, judge me to let us suffer it together. So I see that Joseph understood the, the, the game that God used his family to play in his life. He now accepted to suffer it together with them. And when he was exalted in the position of prime minister, the family came together and both of them began to enjoy. So they both suffered and they both enjoyed. Then I now see that again, the next thing I learned is that uh, I'll use Adam again, that if Adam have rejected the fruit, means he doesn't love the wife. It was love that asked him to, to, to eat the fruit. So the love he has for the wife was so cordial. Nothing would have separated them that he see the wife eating the fruit. He joined and ate. That is the love. So these are the kind of love God wants a human being. Not that if he sees somebody doing evil, you follow the person doing evil. What I mean is that when you love human being to extend, you will now see the reasons you must forgive or you know, try to live in peace with the person by forgetting whatever has conspired. This, has, oh, this is what I mean. By the level of love Adam had for the wife, he joined instead of God punishing only the woman. Because he know that God will punish the woman. He would have said, no, I'm not going to eat. No problem. You have ate. Wait. When the punishment comes, you go through it alone. But he said, no. You man, you've done it. No problem. I will follow you to do it. You suffer. I suffer with you. And when God cursed the wife, he cursed him too. This is the act of love. So God wants us indeed that we should understand that he, he, he doesn't reward us the way we are rewarding human beings. That is what is paining me so much. God doesn't show us bad negative. God doesn't show us wickedness. God is still waiting for the day of judgment. And that is why you see evil is growing so long. Evil, evil is growing so wide. Evil is even lasting than good ones. Do you know that good people die earlier than evil people? Why? That is the plan of God. He's giving them long rope. Maybe they will repent because he doesn't want the death of a sinner. That is the word of God. So you see that God doesn't reward evil to evil the way we does. So if him, God does not reward evil with evil, who born you to reward evil with evil? You see how God is. And now you see what Joseph did. And now you see what Adam did. Now ask yourself a question. Where did you weigh? Where did you fall on? If God weigh you, where is the percentage of your love and your forgiveness? Where is the percentage of your steadfastness? Where is your percentage? Weigh yourself. Put yourself in KG and see what you weigh. And at the end, you can now judge and start your life afresh, knowing that indeed God does not punish us in the sin we commit, but we go ahead, punish people so much. Any little chance we use to revenge, to punish, to say all kinds of things against people because of what? Because they offended you. But do you remember the one you offended someone? Did you remember the one you are doing against God? Do you remember the one you did even in the past against your parents? Did you remember the one you did against your friends in the past? Did you just remember all the wrongs you've done to people? And why is it that someone did the evil or did you wrong immediately? You want to pay back? You want to revenge? How did you forget easily and quickly? I'm rounding today. I pray that the Holy Spirit who have this topic will help us. The journey of Christianity is not a day's journey. Neither is a baby journey. If you want to be a mature Christian, you have to study the word of God and follow it bit by bit. What the Bible is saying about nature and the life of Christ. And that is what he said in that Matthew where we read, because he says something there that indeed, if we really want to be obedient to him, him that is obedient to his father, we must do that thing that his father in heaven love. And we must do that thing, him that does what his father want him to do. So we are the children of the son, the son, a son of the father. So Jesus said, I do things I see my father doing. 
I, I act things I see my father act. I pray things I see my father pray. So we are a follower of Christ. We have to learn how to do what Jesus do. So as Jesus see his father doing, we see Jesus doing, we follow him do. So, and that is the only way him, the father, him, the son, Christ, and him, the, the, we, the children, can able to be in a place, enjoy with God forever. And this is the only thing can make us to live eternity with Christ. If not, it's not going to work. So we need to return back. Check about your life. Check about what you're going through. Check about people you locked in your heart. Check about things you've been counting since the past 5, 10, 16, 20 years ago because of what they did to you. Check about what they just, what someone did to you recently. You've decided to give a gap to have your space, you know, because you don't want that person anymore. Check about, you know, things around you, the people you, you locked in your heart. Just figure out how to ease off and release them out of your mind so that you can be free. And the word of God will be life to you. And at this point, you speak the word of God in prayer. You proclaim it will come to pass. And that is what Jesus said. If not, you'll be making empty noise, empty drawing, empty uh, um, drawing, empty, 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 empty drum in the name of prayer. And at the end, it doesn't work. And these have made so many Christians to lose their faith in the name that God doesn't answer. He has, God has his own principle. In as much you want him to hear you, him to have something he wants you to do before he will hear you, before you answer you. So um, Joseph is our role model and you have already studied about it. And by the grace of God, we've seen what we've learned from Joseph University. Remember the last week topic says, we are set and found Joseph. He found him first of all in the dream. He started following him up. Before you know it, he found him entering his family for them to have conspiracy of selling him. The next thing, he found him in the dungeon. From the dungeon, he found him in the marketplace where he was uh, um, kept at, as, as an auction market to buy. The Ishmaelite bought him. The next thing, he, fo he followed him to Potiphar wife. He found him there again. Satan doesn't rest. And from Potiphar wife, what else? He found him again in the prison. Satan doesn't rest. In all those things, it's nothing but to tell Joseph, where does your dream reach you? A dreamer, a visioner, a prophet, a, a believer, a born again. You have been there, born in again every day. What have you achieved? So many people have been making mockery of you all this while because you've been standing for truth, because of your faith in Christ. I want to tell you, Jesus is coming. Keep on the good work and wait for your master is coming soon. Time shall tell. That is what I tell. I tell people that time shall tell in conclusion of all your journey, all your university or learning center, God will bring it to pass and you will see the prophecy, the vision, the revelation, it will manifest before your eyes. God is not a liar. This is what we have for today. Thank you so much for joining this program and God bless you. Coordinator, are you there? Yes, thank you, Ma, for this teaching. Honestly, it's it's a it's a great one indeed. Okay, um, I don't think is there anybody that have anything to contribute? Okay, Ma, you can you can conclude. All right, Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We are wonderful, Father. You do what man cannot do. That even as you are teaching us about Joseph as the first Christ before you came on earth, because I know that no woman by his own strength can act what Joseph acted. Means you prepared him from heaven and sent him. And even from the trace of Joseph, we found out that this guy, the mom was barren for the, to, to prepare her to bring forth such a savior to the Israelites. Father, many of us are savior to our families, but what we are going through is so much. We ask for divine grace, oh God, especially Father, those that have never known this school of the Spirit, Holy Ghost, I pray you go and sort them and bring them to yourself. Teach them the way of your personal intimacy, the way of communion with God, so that they're able to begin to learn and hear you, because the only thing is for us to hear you speaking. When you talk to us directly, we can understand the language of heaven. But when we doesn't hear you directly, there are some mistakes and there are some misunderstanding and unbelief. But when you speak directly to us, Lord, no, no force can remove your voice in our mind. 
Father, we thank you for today's teaching. I believe you use this message to touch life of your children, especially we that are in the universities, the disciples are in the universities of learning your ways to fulfill our destiny, to fulfill our dreams. Many of us have destiny. Many of us have dreams. But we are the university a way to reach it. And obstacles are here and there. And the deviations are here and there. Misunderstandings are here and there. I ask you, oh God, release the Holy Ghost, the teacher, the revealer, the understanding to help us so that we can able to uh, know that this is what you have for us for able to achieve our dream, even just as you lead yourself in his own wilderness to achieve his dream. Father, we pray that it will not, it will not take more time when we see the actualization, actualization of our dreams and our visions. Thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we pray for this week. We ask you to keep us safe, protect us, and defend us from the plans of the wicked, oh God. Even the days are getting darker. The days are getting even more. But we are hiding under your umbrella of the blood of Jesus. Blessed be thy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining and God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye.